This is Dr. Carly Schmidt with a lecture over Chapter 12 from our textbook. Today we'll be talking about voting, specifically voting behavior of American citizens. So first, it's important to note that voting is a two-stage game. First, you have to make the decision that you're going to vote. And the second is the decision about whom you're going to vote for. All right. And so the actual action has to precede the decision in some in in terms of whom you're going to pull that whom you're going to select on the ballot box. So we're going to take a look at a bit we're going to first look at who actually votes and who doesn't based on various demographic groups. And we'll start with age. Then we'll turn it over and we will examine how people vote and those patterns by these groups. So our first graphic here shows voter turnout by age and it's broken up. You can see uh, the different colored bars represent different age groups. On the left hand side, you can see the percent, that's the percentage of those folks within each age group that voted. And then on the bottom axis, you can see the years from 1984 to 2018. And there's a pretty good couple of pretty uh, standout patterns that happen here. First, we see pretty consistently that people over the age of 60 vote at the highest levels. And as you move down with each of the age groups, we see lower and lower voter turnout. It's also the case that voting goes up and down between each election year. That's because uh, every four years we have a presidential election and that is when we have higher levels of voter turnout compared to midterm or congressional elections. That's when we see voter turnout go down when a president's not on the ballot. But overall, we can make the the we can we can see from this graphic that older voters vote at higher rates than younger voters. The next aspect we'll look at is gender. Uh, if you look at figure one on the left hand side of your screen, again, we have the percentage that vote and then by year of election, we have the purple line represents women, while the bottom green line represents men. And we can see pretty consistently here over time that we're seeing women vote at higher rates than men. If we go back to 1980, it was about a very similar level. It wasn't very distinguished. There wasn't a distinguishable difference. However, we, as the gap between those two bars, uh, those two lines get bigger, that means there's a gap in voter turnout. And so since about, oh, 1996, that gap has been fairly consistent, where we see, for example, in 2016, 59.3% of men voted, compared to 63.3% of women, which suggests that women on average vote about 4% more than men. Um, it's also the case, if the, the, this is presidential elections, we can look out and figure, second figure, and this is looking at midterm elections. Again, we should expect lower voter turnout in these elections because it's not when a president is running. It's just when congressional states are up and we have state legislative races. We just had one of these back in 2018 and we're headed into a presidential election in 2020. But if we look here at this graphic, the the uh, the percentages again are, are kind of map on to that in the presidential elections, okay? Specifically, let's look at 20, uh, the 2018. We saw that 55% of women turned out and vote, voted versus 51.8% of men. So this is about a 3.2% uh, difference. The second, the, the next aspect I wanna look at is in terms of education. Again, we're seeing this bar graphs. Purple lines represent those who have a, who have a uh, more than a college gradu uh, graduate education. So those who have completed some master's work or PhD work. Uh, we see the green lines represent those who have some college or have actually graduated from college. Red are those who just have a high school education. And those, the blue line, are those who, who have less than a high school education. Okay? 
And what we see again is consistently those who have more education are going to vote at higher rates compares that who have less, okay? It goes up and down between midterm and presidential elections. But if we take a look at 1992, for example, 90% of those with, uh, with more than a bachelor's degree voted during that election compared to about 45-ish percent of those who had less than a high school education. If we go back to 2016, our most recent, uh, our most recent presidential election, we see similar mapping on, right? We see about 80% of those who have more than a college degree voted in that election compared to about 34-ish percent of those who had less than a high school graduation. So very clear, as with age and as with gender, we're seeing that with education, we see distinct difference in voter turnout, okay? And so your first discussion question then is over time, which group, edu which education uh, among the education levels, which group tends to vote at higher levels? And which group tends to vote at the lowest level? So again, discussion question number one, across education levels, which group tends to vote at the highest level? And the, second, and the second component is then to tell me which group votes at the lowest level. Our next aspect of voter turnout we're going to explore is income, okay? And so this graphic's a little bit differently, a little bit diff set up a little bit different. Uh, but what we're seeing are different income groups at the bottom. So people are grouped in different income groups. And then the bars represent those election years, 2008, 2010, 2012. And it's the voter turnout level percent, which runs up the access. The percent within those income levels, how, what percentage of them turned out and voted, right? We see a pattern. We see in 2018, it's in 2012, we have higher levels across the groups of voter turnout compared to 2010, which was the midterm elections. We also see an incline in this graphic. As you make more money, we're going to see people vote out at higher levels. Um, I think the most telling graphic here is the wealthiest 1%. Um, they vote at those who have, have the, the wealthiest 1% in our society voted at about a rate of 98%. Compared to those families who make less than 10%, uh, they vote at consistently lower levels. Okay? Our final um, graphic that we're going to take a look at is a demographic group of who votes and who doesn't would be based on race. Um, so the, here we have voter turnout by race and presidential election or all elections. Uh, wait, these are midterm elections. Um, from uh, non-Hispanic whites, non-Hispanic blacks, Hispanics, and others. Um, and so, interesting pattern here. Whites, up until about, up until 2006, uh, whites voted at, uh, at higher levels than African Americans. However, if we look at the 20, uh, 2018 and 2012 election, we saw that African Americans voted at higher levels than whites um, in that election year. This is uh, well-founded in, in research and discussed widely that the presence of an African American candidate, Barack Obama, led to an increase in African American turnout. However, in midterm elections, in 2010, it was uh, voter turnout among whites was almost indistinguishable from that of African Americans. The same for 2014, and then in 2016, we saw a, a, a gap, a, a merge again between African American and white turnout. Now, Hispanic turnout is historically lower, okay, than African American or white turnout. Uh, we see in that that green bar consistently over time is lower than that of of the other two racial groups. And then we have groups, uh, those who don't fit into either group, um, which would be those of perhaps Asian um, ethnicity or uh, other sorts of race identifiers. Uh, that group tends to vote at even lower levels.